grounds maintenance crews are making repairs at Lake Windsor with the uh, drawdown, uh, allowing us to do work a little bit easier there. Uh, the heated dock is uh, getting some major repairs. We're kind of doing that in stages so we don't have to be closed for an extended period of time. But that's underway now, and we're continuing with lake cleanup. <laughs> Our staff that was uh, previously displaced by the temporary closure of the rifle pistol range, we're finding work for them to do in grounds maintenance to help some of those uh, projects along. Our uh, fisheries ecology uh, department has also been busy. Uh, all the fish sampling is complete for the year. Um, we have two ponds of bluegill and one pond of channel catfish broodstock at our aquaculture pond facility. Uh, the bluegill will be stocked out in the early spring. Our fourth aquaculture pond is under construction and it's going to be roughly twice the size of the other three and that will be the last one. Uh, channel catfish have been stocked for the year uh, in all the lakes. Uh, Lowman received 5,053. Um, Windsor 3,000 in 20 and it kind of goes down from there based on the size of the lake. Um, lake Brittany has been stocked once with trout in early uh, November and it'll be stocked again before the end of the year and uh, monthly thereafter until April. And so that's that's my report. Okay. Good to hear that the city of Bella Vista did the repair on Chelsea and that's complete, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for Rick? Comments? For Rick before we move on okay thank you very much okay so I've agreed to let the public forum occur before we actually take the vote on the things that are on our agenda today uh, with that being said there's a whole bunch of you in the audience there is a three-minute time limit which Jessica is gonna manage and I would ask that uh, this thing, we're, this, this meeting doesn't have an indefinite, we normally meet for about an hour. So at some point, we're going to have to call this meeting and, and, and call the vote. So I want to let as many of you speak as possible. But if you get to, if we get to a point where the person that spoke before you has the same sentiments that you just expressed, then you don't need to get up there and repeat the same thing over and over and over again. Okay? So I would ask that you keep that in mind. Uh, that, that could get quite repetitious if everybody gets up there and says, I'm for or I'm against, and you, you keep saying the same thing. So I would ask that you keep that in mind. Keep your comments to three minutes or less if you possibly can. Uh, and keep in mind also, you know, we're an advisory committee. We don't have the final say-so on anything, just to remind everybody. We advise the POA Board of Directors. They can take what we do and, and adopt it. They can modify it. They can say, you know what, we think you guys are wrong. We're not going to do it. So just keep that in mind. We're an advisory board. Uh, this is a group of volunteers who meets monthly and, and sits and tries to make the best decisions possible. I will say that we did, we did have a subcommittee study this issue quite in depth. They did a lot of work. They met several times outside of the normal meeting environment. And I think they came up with some some fairly significant discoveries and, and, and they're very knowledgeable about the situation. So I will tell you that even though you may not know exactly everything about, you might not have heard everything that actually went on in that subcommittee, but those guys did a really good job and I want to thank them for doing that. So with that being said, let's go to the first guest, uh, Ron Wilder. Widener. If you would state your name and my name is Rob Widener, live in 21 Glenwood Place. I would just like to say that I'm opposed to the e-foils being approved for, for the lake. I think they're dangerous. Um, you're, I, I would also ask if uh, you have consulted with the POA attorneys and our insurance carrier because at some point you're going to have to get them involved because eventually there will be an accident and you can either get them involved before or you'll get them involved after one way or the other. The, uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought, but 
anyway, I, I think they're very dangerous. I grew up in Donovan, Missouri on the Current River, a very small river. They allowed jet skis on them. Jet ski people were fairly reckless and they would try to throw their wake and flip over canoes and tubers, throw their wakes onto uh, swimmers. And as a boater on Loman, I'm concerned that I will possibly hit one of these e-foils, but I'm even more concerned that the e-foils will hit a swimmer in the no-wake zones. So I think it's going to be a, a real liability to the association if you allow these uh, e-foils because of the speed that they can go and the lack of visibility of them. Thank you. Just so everyone knows, legal has been consulted the entire process before, right after we named the subcommittee, we got legal involved, and uh, they have been involved the entire process, just, just so everybody knows that. Uh, Kevin Hulls. I'm Kevin Yules. I've lived here in Bella Vista for 16 years. And I've been on the lakes, and uh, 16 years, Bella Vista has come a long, long way. And we have a long way to go, but we have good people running, the, running this and making it happen. But I'm the president of the Fly Tires Club here in Bella Vista. And we put together a letter that we sent out to the uh, committee and to the board and to um, Rick and uh, Tom. And uh, we appreciate you letting us all come in here and give our two cents on the uh, e-foils. Um, I'm going to read the letter that was sent out to you on um, December 1st. Dear Lakes Committee and POA Board, please accept this letter on behalf of the Bella Vista Fly Tires Club, a 501c3 organization with over 165 members and continuing to grow and it has been a hallmark of the Bella Vista community for 50 years. We've worked with the committee for a long time. During this time, we have worked closely on numerous POA projects with generous monetary and staffing support. The Bella Vista Fly Tires are hereby expressing our major concern over the submitted proposal received by the Bella Vista Lake Committee. This proposal requests the removal of EFOIL boards from the POA current personal watercraft ban on Bella Vista Lakes. On November 9th, the Bella Vista Fly Tires uh, Club members unanimously voted to oppose the proposal which would allow the EFOIL boards and the potential of any additional motorized personal watercraft PWC on the Bella Vista Lakes. We promote this, we promote the continued Continuous of the uh, current PWC regulations maintained by the uh, Bella Vista Lakes Committee and the POA Board of direct Directors for over 16 years. We've had this on the board that we weren't going to do uh, jet skis and e-foils e and different things. So the Bella Vista Fly Tires strongly urge the Bella Vista POA Lakes Committee to reject the proposal and maintain the status quo, allowing all residents the assurance that the lakes remain peaceful and safe. And I appreciate the time to come up here and we'll see where this goes. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Sorry I butchered your last name. <laughs> Gary Rowland. Rowland. You left. Okay. Mr. Kevin. I've been fighting a fraudulent credit card issue for this morning. I've been here 19 years. I have a lakefront property on, on Loch Lomond. Uh, I'm a pretty regular bass fisherman. My concern is that the, the population in Bella Vista continues to grow. Our lakes are already crowded. We got lots and lots of uh, kayaks. We've got canoes. We've got bass boats, we've got party barges, we've got uh, Tahoe-type ski boats. It's very crowded out there, especially in the summer. 
My concern is that as a fisherman, uh, I, I, it looks to me like this is an accident waiting to happen. We have enough problems uh, with just the boat traffic and we have a, another obstacle that, that's motorized, silently motorized, that we're going to have to contend with. I'm afraid that somebody's going to run into a bass boat or a bass boat is going to run into a silent, unseen occupant on an e-foil. The results of that are not going to be pleasant. Uh, I think it's only going to get more crowded. Bella Vista is a very popular place for lots of good reasons. And my concern is that the situation crowding just with boats and kayaks and pontoon boats and all the other watercraft on the, on the lake, it, it's going to get very dangerously occupied. And I think this is one that <sighs> our lake is too small. I have no problem against an e-foil, but I think those folks ought to head for Beaver. Thank you. Thank you, sir. John Nutto. Uh, good afternoon. My name is John Nuttall. I live at 40 uh, Pimlico Drive. And uh, excuse the fact that I'm wearing the wrong color blue shirt, but normally I wear a blue shirt with the fly tires. Uh, first thing I want to say is I believe that the subcommittee started this process with bad information. They had a letter from uh, Mr. Harris that suggested that the definition of a personal watercraft was vague. It is not. Personal watercraft are clearly called out in Arkansas state law by the Department of Natural Resources and the U.S. Coast Guard has a very detailed definition of a personal watercraft and these two are almost mirror images of each other. And most of the states around us use that same, uh, same definition. So everybody knows what a personal watercraft is. Uh, second, decades ago, not just 2007, which was the last, is the oldest electronic copy of the uh, rules and regulations, uh, personal watercraft and jet skis have been banned from our lakes. That decision was made a long time ago for a lot of really good reasons. And it just says really simply, use of seaplanes, personal watercraft, i.e., uh, jet skis, water scooters are prohibited on Bella Vista Lakes. That issue was, has long since been decided and many people that bought houses in this town bought a house on the lake because they knew there would not be a jet ski running around their backyard. I've owned a house on water where the jet skis could run in your backyard. It's not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, and contrary to what everybody thinks, we're talking about just uh, uh, e-foils. When you allow one change to the rule of the definition of a personal watercraft, you open Pandora's box, and what do you say six months from now when a guy comes in and says, well, I have a jet ski and it's electric and it doesn't make a wake. I should be able to have mine on the lake. You know, that's going to be a really tough uh, answer for whoever has to make that decision. It's a slippery slope that we really don't want to go that way. When I, before my time on the board, uh, I sat down with Tommy Bailey and was asking about some of the rules and I asked about the jet ski uh, uh, rule change and got a pretty detailed information from him about the process and it's not necessarily the vehicle that's the overriding uh, culprit in this. It's the people that ride them. They don't obey the rules, they, uh, they buzz the shoreline, they drive you know, wherever they want to go because they're not necessarily rule followers. And I, I'm sure you all remember, we were all 20 years old once, and we were probably just like that. But that's not going to change in the future. And I can assure you that the Rick's department, Lake Department, does not have enough money to police three lakes worth of people running around on jet skis. Thank you very much for your time, and obviously I'm very opposed to this suggestion. Thanks, John. Red Peggy Taylor. I'm Peggy Taylor, my husband's Charlie Taylor, and we've lived on Loch Lomond for 20 years now. But I just want to tell a brief story. It's not, if there could be an accident, there will be an accident. I experienced one. Some dear friends of mine who live on a finger of Beaver Lake that's about the same width as Loch Lomond, and he was sitting on his, on his jet ski, just sitting there by his dock, with his little two-year-old son sitting there on his on the jet ski with him 
and a boat came by very slowly, throwing a big wake, and a young boy on another jet ski that he was staying with his grandparents, and he was using the jet ski, jumped the wake behind the boat, hit the little boy, the two-year-old. Well, that little boy lived to be 18, only because his mother sat up with him at night when he had pneumonia. She fed him out of her own mouth. She would feed him food because he never learned. He couldn't talk. He, he, had a, he had a computer that he had one finger that he could use. He had a total body cast he lived in, and he died when he was 18. So it's not could there be an accident. It's when will there be an accident. That's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Anderson. Hello, Karen Anderson. I live on 4 Lundcarty Circle, Bella Vista. I'm also a part of the Fly Tires Club. And in my opinion, I oppose the allowance of the e-foils on the lakes. I also own a boat, and I know that what it takes to get up to speed across the lake, I cannot see over the bow. Should there be any person that has fallen off of their e-foil or actually using their e-foil in front of me, I would not be able to see until my boat starts to come to an even keel. Um, that worries me that I would have to look out for that. In my opinion also, I do not believe that they can coexist co with fishing, kayaking. Um, I'm um, opposed to that. If you've ever been out fishing, what you don't need is somebody that can be around you uh, riding their, their personal watercraft. I also agree that opening this throws a door wide open to all other possible watercraft, uh, personal watercraft in the area. Um, I, I just don't see where they can coexist. There are better lakes that these can go to and have been going to, and what I believe is that the lakes should remain as they are uh, as what I bought into when I purchased the house that I live in now. Thank you. Thank you. Beverly Widener? Uh, it's all been said, and I have some Okay. Uh, is it? Oh, I can't read this writing. Somebody lives on 12 Miracle Lane? Does that Lance Scott live on it? Yes. Lance, sorry. <laughs> I figured it was mine. You, you should have been a doctor, it. Lance. My name is Lance Childers, and uh, I am a POA member. Some of the stuff that I want to say has already been talked about. I don't want to, you know, be redundant or anything. A couple of things I did want to point out. Some of the state requirements, I don't know if everybody knows about them. I know the state requirements for the EFOILs, they have to be uh, registered with the state. They have the the user has to have a life jacket. The user must be at least 16, if, and minors have to be accompanied by an adult. I don't know how you accompany somebody on an e-foil, but that's my understanding. Oh. Also, I want to talk about the expense. Somebody else mentioned about enforcement. Okay, if we're going to have to enforce this and, and the potential for other watercraft and vessels coming out there, which they will come, there's no way to stop them. I think everybody would probably recognize that fact. Uh, there's going to have to be some kind of control. We're going to have to have patrol officers out there. We're going to have to have an increased number of patrol officers. We're probably going to have to certify our patrol officers, lake patrol officers, so that they can, they have some authority. You know, if they're out there on the lake, stuff going on around them, they're going to have to be able to do something. That's going to be an expense. We're going to have to have more lake patrol boats to uh, get these guys around. The other thing I want to touch on was liability. I know somebody talked about liability. In fact, I think a couple of people have. But there is such a thing as shared liability. I'm not an attorney, but I have seen this more than once. And what it is, is when you go in, like if something happens to a kid that's swimming out here, and you know, somebody runs into him and hurts him or kills them or whatever, there's going to be a lawsuit. Well, when that lawsuit comes, defendants are going to be named. And commonly, the uh, 
the attorney that represents the plaintiff is going to say there's a shared liability. So he's going to look around and say, who else are we going to name as defendants? I don't know that he'll name the POA board, the POA members. I don't know that he will, but I don't know that he won't. My experience is they're going to name everybody they think is a possibility. Okay, and you know, if they do name us, we may be able to get out of it. But even if we do get out of it, how much is it going to cost us in legal fees? So anyway you look at it, this thing's going to be expensive. I agree with the lady that said there is going to be accidents out here. There's no way to avoid it because of our overpopulation. Real quick, I want to show a demonstration. Lobeman is our biggest lake. That's Lobeman up there at the top of Beaver Lake. We just don't have it. Windsor is the next size large lake. It's less than half the size of Lowman. And then Lake Ann is less than half the size of Windsor. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lance. <clears throat> okay, the next name is even harder to, to, to read. Uh, 20, the address starts with a 20. You signed in after Lance and before Max. Looks like it starts with a D. No. This is this this starts with a twenty. Your address is twenty. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Max Schofield. live at three Wandsworth Drive and I know you're not going to answer any questions but the question I have for you is who is this for <laughs> who's, who's here going to who's here that's going to ride this thing I mean it, it really doesn't fit into our community <clears throat> you know back I, I suppose in 2007 when personal watercraft were <clears throat> Uh, eliminated. I'm sure they weren't eliminated just for the noise. They were eliminated because they're intrusive and people they don't get on them without testing them. <clears throat> and to test them you want to know how fast they're going to go. You want to know how fast they can get out of the water. You want to know if they can jump something. And if you eliminate the noise that's exactly what you've got with the hydrofoil. Nobody is going to ride those things without testing them in every way they possibly can. They want to know how fast they're going to go. <clears throat> they're going to know, want to know how fast they get out of the water. They want to, want to know if they can jump something. Personally, I'm not really concerned about that person's safety. They chose to get on that thing, and they know what the consequences are. I'm worried about myself. I've been on the water for over 70 years. <clears throat> I know that I've hit stuff in the water. I've talked to your lake patrol people, and they, they say, these things are bad news. I don't know if you've talked to lake patrol people here, but they need to be here. If you're going to if you're concerned about the speed, and you should be, in the no-wake zones, <clears throat> you're going to have to change those no-wake zones to speed zones. If you change them to speed zones, what, what's the speed going to be? Five miles an hour? Are you going to give your Lake Patrol people radar guns? This is a can of worms. I love to play with worms. But this is a can of worms. No one of us, nobody can get back in the can. <clears throat> Technology is changing at an exponential rate. I question anybody here that can write this designation and foresee what the problems are going to be in five years. You're going to have hydrofoils that can go 50, 60 miles an hour and carry four or five people. And you're gonna to have to revisit this thing over and over and over. Can of worms. 
And the people that buy these things, they cost from seven to $15,000. They are not, I mean, they're mostly young people, you know that. They are not going to want to just float around in the, in the, in the water. Okay, sir, your, your time is up. I know, but I have more to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, pol I apologize. All right, here's one I can read. Michelle Gibson. Hi, I'm Michelle Gibson. Live at 11 Rupert Lane here in Bella Vista. Also a member of the Fly Tires. And um, I think what I want to say has already been said, but I think redundancy is good because as a, a committee, you all need to, and a board, you all need to hear it again. And like the gentleman before me just said, who are you considering changing the rule for? Because it looks like everyone here is definitely, oh, okay, I'm waiting. Oh, good, I was waiting for someone to stand up. I also want to reiterate what um, uh, John Nuttall said. This is a Pandora's box situation and it will be putting toothpaste back in the tube once this is out it won't be able you won't be able to undo it and once you classify the hydrofoils as a personal watercraft that will eventually lead to the question of jet skis to be included because that would be a valid argument one of the questions that i had um, to consider would be is the POA going to require the personal watercrafts to have liability and related insurance coverage in order to register the e-foils? And um, I think the segment of the, one of the segments of the population that might be enjoying the lakes, especially in the summertime, here in Bella Vista is the transient population that's, that's uh, vacationing here or is attracted by the bike trails that also enjoy our lakes, aren't familiar with the lakes, aren't familiar with the um, wake zones and the rules on the lakes, and who might also be um, younger crowd and more apt to be using the hydrofoils and are probably um, another component to the dangerous side of the hydrofoils. And it's something to consider when the committee researches the safety. I would think that the residents of Bella Vista, those that live on the lake who have grandkids and are much more cautious and considerate of their neighbors on the lake, but it's the other um, people who come to enjoy our lakes in the summertime who, just as the um, lakes, um, the lakes um, rangers who are out there who have to run off voters who are not supposed to be on our lakes. We have a lot of other people on the lakes in the summertime, and that's a whole other element to worry about when you're unleashing a hydrofoil that can go 35 miles an hour in um, speeding across the lake with people's grandkids out there swimming. It's a dangerous situation, and I think also definitely an insurance liability risk and hazard. And having lived here through the stump dump fiasco, don't want to repeat any kind of that kind of stuff again. So that's it. Thank, Thank you. Jerry Allen. <laughs> I'm generally not honored with a speaking engagement. So uh, I've lived in Bella Vista for seven years. And the only mistake I made about moving to Belvis is I didn't do it soon enough. But I'm concerned on the safety aspect from this point. A few years ago, I was fishing with a friend on a lake, fortunately not one of the Bell Vista lakes, and somebody in one of the, the ski dudes or whatever you call them, cut right in front of us. And if he hadn't been aware enough to pull back, he would have hit him. There was a young man and a young lady on the back of that ski do. We could have killed them. Now then, if I'm on one of these ski do's and I get hit by a speeding boat, whether it's a fast boat or a ski boat, I don't have a chance. 
I'm just exactly, if I'm going down the road in my Miata and I get T-boned by a sea mine, I don't have a chance in that situation. It's a battle I'm going to lose. I also look at it from this standpoint, I spent my working life in casualty insurance. You've got many boat owners here. If, if I'm on one of these, these foils and I get hit by a boat and I'm injured seriously, I might want to sue them. Now, somebody might say, well, we've got a waiver we're going to have them sign. I'm going to tell you, if I'm an enterprising trial attorney, I'm going to say, so what? I'll see you in court. Frequently, waivers don't hold up. So my final point is, we don't want to hurt anybody out there, but do we want to put our boat owners here in Bella Vista at risk? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Larry Lepardo. Mark Dubisky. Hi, I'm Mark Dubisky. I live at 12 Coilton Drive here in Bella Vista, and I'm also a member of the Fly Tires Club. Um, I'm opposed to the use of e-foils or any other personal watercraft on our Bella Vista lakes for all the reasons you've already heard. Um, I just wanted to amplify one comment that someone made earlier in that, um, the current regulations uh, were designed to ensure a safe and enjoyable experience on, on our lakes for everyone. You know, in my opinion, I mean, altering these regulations to appease a certain subgroup of people while endangering the rest is just inadvisable and to me, you know, personally unacceptable. That's really all I got to say. Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Steve Bradbury. Steve Bradbury, 7 Thackeray Lane. Uh, we've been here eight years. I've had a boat lease on Loman for four years. I'm one of the blue shirt people too, so uh, I'm opposed to the e-foils and personal watercraft. Since everyone can't speak, could we just get a show of hands of people that are opposed to having these on our lakes? Thank you very much. Thank you. Ellen Creekbaum. Hello. You know, I really find it surprising. Oh, Ellen Creekbaum, 50 Churchill Lane. I've been in Bella Vista for 12 years on Lake Windsor. And I, I really find it interesting that every time there's an important vote with this committee, it's in December with a meeting that the date was moved. Otherwise, I think we'd have a lot more people. So you might want to think about that. The last time was the wake boat. Boat, you might, you, everybody's new except Matt. He remembers. <laughs> so I request that you vote for option one, which is no motorized foils or surfboards on our lakes. Don't open this door. It will be confusing. Why yes to e-foils and no to something else? Because there's something else that these people are coming up with that's going to be on the lake next. Residents may know the rules and learn the rules, but the people that come in Airbnbs in our neighborhoods, renters, they will assume they can put anything on the lake. They're not going to read all those rules. And I saw my first e-foil on Windsor, and the owner said when the lake ranger came that he was staying in an Airbnb. If you, don't, if you haven't heard, we have a problem with Airbnbs in our community. And they're on the lakes primarily because that's where people want to go and spend their vacations. So if you don't know, get informed about that now. And lastly, I want to know who's going to raise the orange flag when the, the water, when the person on the foil falls into the lake. My husband suggests we get beanies with flags. <laughs> Bill Ginger. I'm Bill Ginger. I've lived on uh, Loch Lomond, Tyree Raceway for seven years. I want to look at each one of you in the face. 
each and every one of you members on this board. You are the gatekeepers for the Bella Vista Lakes. What you do affects what the rest of the PA, PB residents have when they're on the lakes with their boats and their kids swimming and everything. The size of the Wake Lakes is approximately, of the three lakes is approximately 800 acres. Beaver Lake is 40 times bigger. Now I'm not taking consideration 150 foot no wake zone around each of the three lakes. Beaver, Table Rock, Grand Lake are all within easy driving distance, hour to hour and a half. I checked this morning, it's most updated information I can find with the U.S. Coast Guard, Arkansas Code. I called two local insurance companies. E-foils are considered PWC, personal watercraft. You can put rouge and lipstick on a pig, but at the end of the day, you still got a pig. The growth, we've had a 48% increase in licensed vessels from 2018 to 2023. The next five years, by the end of 2028, we should be on target for 11,600 licensed vessels. That's everything, paddle boards all the way up to pontoon boats. As far as uh, visibility with an e -foil, I live on Tyree Raceway. Tyree, Granton, Stony Kirk are all approximately 500 foot wide. There are times in the day from the sun glare, I cannot see across what is across the channel. If an e -foil rider goes down, he has no spotter like a skier would or a wakeboard would. He carries no flag, he, he totes no float, he's out there on his own. So you're at the mercy of if you've got pontoon boats crossing with a narrow 200 foot width in Tyree Channel or the other channels, there could be potential problems. The other thing is, is your Airbnbs, they can go buy wake boats or e-foils. They're not that expensive. $10,000, a couple will have spend that much for good e mountain bikes, motorcycle, bass boats, 10,000 is not that much. For $80 and a friend at the POA, you can come from out of town and bring your e -foil to Beaver Lake. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Tom Deppenbrock. Afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom Deepenbrock. I'm with the Bella Vista Fly Tires. I've lived here for 15 years. I live on 48 Chelmsworth, which is on Lake Windsor. And I'm thinking of buying a seaplane, and I'm pretty sure I can land it <laughs> in the southeast lagoon of where I live. I, I got the money for it. Uh, I do have some other concerns here, though. I mean, I have a pontoon boat. It's a 60 horse. I have to have liability. Does the guy on the e-coil have to have liability insurance too? Look at some of these other notes here. I do an Airbnb. I do it legit. Got everything according to what the POA wants. I live where my Airbnb is. I have guests that just came to the house. These are evil Knievel guys. The guy told me how many broken bones he had from his last motorcycle wreck. He wanted to take his e-coil on the lake. I told him no. I've had people come in with jet skis. I tell them, no, if your Airbnb is not manned, we've got one down the street, it's a free for all. They're gonna bring in their e-coils and they're gonna bring in their friends and their friends are gonna bring in their friends with e-coils, okay? The flag idea and the beanie cap is great, but you need something taller. You need a flag that's about 10 foot tall so you can see them. I don't care where they plant the flag or attach it. Has anybody, you don't need to answer the question, looked at the EPA to see the effects on lithium in a lake? I'm sure they're gonna say these things can't leak. Well, there's a lot of things that can't happen, 
but I would look into the EPA and see how hazardous it is to the water and the lakes that we fish and live on. I got one final statement, and I think I can cram it in. For years, the Bella Vista Fly Tires have worked with the Lakes Committee and the POA. Thousands of dollars have been given to our lakes and whatever we need, docks, uh, habitats, fish docking. We hope this relationship would continue. We really do. We enjoy working with Rick, okay? I just hope that you hear our words. Thank you. Bob, uh, Ains Backer. Okay. Joshua Harrison. Thank you, Joshua Harrison, 27 Edelson Street on Loch Lomond. Um, <clears throat> so, we've, uh, we've heard from a lot of people who are opposed to, and correctly so, to personal watercraft. And all these gentlemen and ladies have a lot of experience, and they're not wrong about personal watercraft. Uh, in fact, we heard that uh, the definition read to us of, an, of the personal watercraft definition in our rules, the old Bell Vista POA rules, and he said it was, uh, Or was it? Oh yeah, uh, jet skis and water scooters, that's what he said. Now, there's a lot of gentlemen here who are, are opposed to changing the rules. I'm not asking the, the committee to change any rules. That should be the definition. In fact, it accords with the definition in the dictionary, which is a jet propelled boat ridden like a motorcycle. That's what a PWC is, that's what everyone knows it is. No one's trying to put lipstick on a pig because that's what a PWC is, and we all agree on that. We actually all agree on that. And I'm not trying to argue for PWCs to be made, to be allowed on Loch Lomond. I defer to all of your experience on that, and you're not wrong. And the reason you're not wrong is there are specific things that are dangerous about PWCs, specific things. The first one is off-power steering. It doesn't have any. A PWC, when you back, if you're about to run into something, you get off the throttle. And when you get off that throttle, you can't steer it anymore. That's not true with an e-foil. An e-foil has a foil going to the ground. It is maneuverable just like a boat's rudder. In fact, it's like standing on a boat's rudder with all your weight. You can turn it as long as it's moving forward, just like a boat with a rudder. It's not like a PWC when it comes to off-power steering. So it's different. Number two, weight. The average PWC weighs 12, um, I'm sorry, 850 pounds. They can weigh up to 1,200 pounds. You'll never see somebody carrying a PWC. I'm a grandparent. I carry my e-foil board down my hill to my dock on Lake Loch Lama. It's a steep hill. Um, 60 pounds. Speed. You know that a PWC, you know, a jet ski, they're fast. And they can go, well, it says right here, I, I looked it up. I, I've got this uh, flyer, uh, you know, summary. It's been updated. I, I sent you guys one before, but this one's updated to have much more information and citations. I'll share it to you when I'm done, and I'm just giving you an overview now. But um, the most PWC models can reach 70 miles an hour. Okay, my e-foil board goes running speed. That's it, just running speed. If I were to go as fast as I wanted, as fast as I possibly could, max 20 miles an hour. Um, no way, also when, an, when a, I would appreciate it if I, there have been so many points, and I'll go quick, but I mean, I'm the only guy here talking about the other side, and if I could, um. I'll give you 30 more seconds. Ah, oh, jeez. All right, so, um, when you fall off an e-foil board, it settles into the water and the drag increases really quickly. The board stops right away. Now, uh, unlike power boats and PWCs, e-foil boards don't endanger others. They don't have anywhere near the speed. They don't drag a rope neck level. E-foil board's visibility uh, is just as good as a, as a stand-up paddle board's. 
It's better than a water skier or a jet skier. I mean, I'm sorry, or a, um, not a jet skier. It's better than a water skier or a wakeboarder who falls into the water. For a while, they're just a floating head. Uh, and it's, you, you know, the, the e-foil boarder at least has a buoyant board with him. He's not going to drown. I'm, I mean, I'm a competition swimmer, but uh, even if I weren't, the e-foil board's right there. It's not PwC. There's no need to change the rules. And the last thing I would say is this. One thing that you gentlemen, you're very experienced, but you just happen to be wrong about lumping in e-foil boards with PwC. That's the only mistake you're making, is lumping them together, all right? Because you take an e-foil board, you guys don't realize this. I think Josh, I'm the most experienced person Josh, in the room. Josh, your, your minute's up. Thank you. I got you. I got you. I got your email, and I've sent it to all the members. This looks like majority, but I just want to point out, you know, Joshua, Josh, Josh, you had your time. Uh, Mylon Kubert. I'm Mylon Kubek. I'm 27 Kendall Drive. Um, I'm new to this area. I've only been here for five months. And I tell you, my wife and I couldn't have been, picked a better place to live. And so far, I'm pretty impressed with the governance of Bella Vista. But I am from California, so my bar is pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> Most everything that these, these ladies and gentlemen have talked about, you know, I would have gone over. I'm just going to hit the slippery slope things. One is jet skis. Eventually, jet skis are going to turn electric. And then once they turn electric, how much of a difference is it from, uh, from the e-foils? The second thing is the e-foils are, are morphing, just like technology is changing. I know this is hard to see, but this is the latest out on the market. And it's an e-foil with handlebars. So again, how much farther is that is from an electric jet ski? The last thing I want to address is air wings. Uh, if you go up on YouTube, which I rabbit hold, now air wings are being introduced to hydrofoils. So that means the whole operator, the hydrofoil, and the wing, the air wing, is airborne. Where do you draw the line? And I guess that's those are some of the slippery slope things that, well, are going to be coming down the pike before too long. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Steve McKee. Thank you all for your hard work in preserving our uh, dams, our lakes, and our parks. Uh, a couple of things on this very important subject. The definition of a personal watercraft is a vessel less than 16 feet propelled by a motor and designed to be sat, knelt, or stood upon. A kayak, you're actually below the gunwales. That's one of the differences there. The proposal to allow an e-foil on our lakes opens the door to other PWCs, ski doos jet skis, jet boards, or we might be sued for discrimination. The lake restrictions have been in place for years, and the purpose was to maintain the peace and quiet, the beauty, and the environment of our lakes. Just as we don't allow motocross on our trails or ATVs on our golf courses, uh, we also restrict lake usage. It's very reasonable. Specific to e-foils, there is a question of necessary speed to get up, and once you're up, to actually foil and then to ride. Apparently, it takes about 10 miles an hour to start foiling and they may attain speeds, depending on your model, of course, 35 miles an hour. Uh, they're faster than the limited no-wake zones. So basically, you're going to force all of them out into the uh, open areas. Our Bella Vista POA Fishing, Boating, and Water Sports brochure restricts PWCs 
and establishes safe guidelines for all users and lake residents. We have to quit allowing risk and then saying it's not on us, it's on you. So I urge you to do what is right for all the members rather than a couple of special interests. Keep the PWC and EFOIL restrictions in place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Mike Helvey. My name is Mike Helvey. I live at 13 Apple Cross Place. Um, I want to start my comments with this. I was in law enforcement for over 30 years. In, oh, okay. I was in law enforcement for over 30 years and went to several training sessions um, for liability issues. Um, the most one I remember most is from a sergeant from the California Highway Patrol, a recovering Californian. Um, and his, his statement was, if it's predictable, it's preventable. Um, what everybody else has said already, I'm not going to go into that, but I am a witness to him writing Z-Foil. Um, he was very erratic on it. He would fall. All of a sudden, he disappeared in the water. Um, it made it very difficult to see. Um, he was going around the, uh, the uh, tow and ski buoys, just zipping around. Um, and again, it made, it made it very hard to see. I was on our boat one time. He fell. I couldn't see him at all. So it makes it very dangerous out there. Um, I'm opposed to these. I don't want to see anybody get hurt, let alone the person on the e-foil or anybody in a boat or anything like that. So um, I think the board needs to look at this real close and, and ban these. Um, all um, personal watercraft, gas and electric, no matter what they are. And again, remember, if it's predictable, it's preventable. Thank you. Okay, does anybody, before we move on, I've, we've got the, uh, everybody on the list is, hang on a second, everybody on the list has had the opportunity to talk. Does anybody have anything different to say? Go ahead. My name is Larry McGraw, I'm at 77 Stonehaven. So the only thing I'd say different is, first of all, there are electric um, ski whatever you want to call them, that are available now. Google it, they're out there. So it is a slippery slope, as others have said. And so what I question, and I know there won't be an answer right now, but what I question is why the subcommittee has recommended option two in particular. That is, they didn't recommend the motorized surfboards, yet they do the e-foils. Again, what's the real difference other than maybe 10 miles per hour? I mean, I really don't know the difference, but maybe somebody else does. And again, slippery slope. If you, if you say okay to e-foils today, why not the motorized surfboards a year from now? Thank you. Hi, my name is Suzanne Saltz. I live at 15 Mary Kirk Lane, which is on Loch Lomond. And I'm just gonna say, I was looking at uh, the statement on the wall back there, it says, our mission, enhancing the lives of our members. Now that's not enhancing the lives of a few members or one member, but all members, which means that you guys have a duty to protect us from ourselves. And if that means not allowing certain toys that we wanna have and use, that means you don't allow it because there's other places that are more suitable like Beaver Lake, which is close by, for people to take those items. Thank you. Thank you. My name is, my name is Bill Gerhardt. I live on Lake Windsor. I would like to talk about accidents. On Thanksgiving Day, due to the fast uh, action of my neighbor who contacted me, we fished out somebody out of Lake Windsor and their little boy that was six years old prevented hyperthermia, and they were on a canoe. So it can happen to anything. So anyhow, enough of that. Um, I, would, I support e-foils. I've been riding hydrofoils for over 20 years. All right, I'm probably as old as many of you in this room. Um, grandkids as well. So they're not a risk. To the gentleman here, these are fundamentally different than a, power, a PWC. I've ridden PWCs. When you're on a hydrofoil, you have self-preservation as your main instinct. There's nothing between you and the water except your life vest. So when you see another boat, you're immediately, any danger, you stop. Because that self-preservation kicks in, not like a personal watercraft. As this gentleman said, 
You stop like that. On Lake Windsor, I see people go by with their boats all the time. They have hydrofoils being towed. They're going 35, 40 miles an hour, maybe 20. The fact is, if you're, and I have many boaters that come and use my dock, many of the fishermen use my dock, I see you guys down there, fine. But which is more disturbing to you? Somebody going 20 miles an hour with no wake or a wakeboard with big wakes going by disturbing you? So what I would say is the actual practice is you're going slower, there's a lot more control, they're not a hazard, they're not noisy. I would like to address the other issue. So practical real experience is this is a much, this is not a personal watercraft. That's how it's des designated. There are many places in this country and also abroad where an e-bike is considered a motorcycle. We don't call e-bikes bicycles here. We don't call them motor, we call them bicycles, we don't call them motorcycles. An e-foil is much more similar to a hydrofoil that goes behind a boat or even water skis as far as the danger it poses to other people as opposed to a motorcycle. So the regulatory authorities have said, okay, and I've read, we've all read the definition of a PWC, right? It's got a motor, 16 foot, you ride on it. You take an e-bike, an e-bike, is it closer to a motorcycle or is it closer to a bicycle? What I would tell you is that an e-foil is much closer to a water ski who go faster than e-foils than, um, than a PWC. You're not gonna get the same behavior. And in all respect to the many fishermen, you've been doing it for many years, people have been fishing for thousands of years. You will not see a large community of e-foil supporters because it's only been out for a few years. So I would recommend to the, to the committee here is it follow the same regulations as a boat. If with Rick and it's a problem for the patrol people, do it as a provisionary. Give the e-foils a chance. If there are issues, close it down. But let's, let's give it a try. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne Doyle, I've been a resident for 15 years here. I won't take up much of your time. I just understand that uh, uh, your subcommittee went in quite a bit of detail, uh, studied it a lot, and I would just like to indicate that it's my understanding that one of your members was not in agreement with what was recommended. Uh, it was not a unanimous decision, and I would uh, ask that you all consider that member's uh, objections to approving this. That's Thank, all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Okay, thanks for everyone's participation. Thanks for being polite and kind and recognizing everybody's opinion. I'd like to now do a vote. First vote is going to be on allowing motorized kayaks and paddle boards. Uh, this is something that we discussed and I I feel that we pretty much have agreement on that, uh, but we wanted to vote on it to make it official. So I'd ask now that we get a motion to do that vote. Can we get a motion? Okay, do I get a second? I'll second. Okay. So all those in favor of allowing motorized kayaks and paddle boards? Any opposed? Two opposed, seven four, is that right? 7-2 on the first vote. So that motion passes. Next one we're going to vote on is the vote for the three options that was, was on the attached file. Option one, in simple terms, is do not allow motorized hydrofoils, e-foils, or motorized surfboards. So basically it's the status quo. It's what we have today. Option number two, which was recommended by the subcommittee, was to allow hydrofoils but do not allow motorized surfboards. Option number three would be to allow both motorized hydrofoils and e-foils and motorized surfboards. It would be allow all three, or all, both, both, both types. So any questions or comments from the committee before we proceed to a vote after I've read the three options? Anybody have anything to say or opinions or Going back to Ellen's point, uh, Ellen, I, I don't remember the vote on wake board, boards being in December. It might have been. Uh, this happened, this is just a timing issue. 
you know, it happened in December. It wasn't by choice. Well, the meeting gets moved every, we, we, we do one meeting in November and December, so it really didn't get moved. It was published wrongly the first time, so the meeting technically did not get moved. There was a mistake when it was published. We, we have, we typically, ever since I've been here, we've had one meeting combined November and December, so I don't know where that came from, but just to let you know. All right, should we proceed to a vote? Do I get an, a motion to proceed to a vote? Okay. Okay, we have to vote individual on all three. Yeah, someone even proposed uh, which option. Okay, on. so we have to do each one individually. So. Is it we vote on option one? Okay, do I get a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of option one? There's no reason why I have to scratch my head. Okay. Two, option. three, four. That's four against. Four, 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 option one. Okay, all those opposed to option one. One, two, three, four, five. Five against. Okay, do I got a motion to vote on option number two? I'll make the motion to vote on option number two. Okay, do I get a second? Okay, all those in favor of option number two? One, two, three, four, five. All those opposed to option number two. One, two, three, four. Okay. Motion on motion option number two passes on a five to four vote. And I don't think there's any reason to vote for option three because all the votes have been taken up in option number one and option number two. Any other comments or questions, concerns, before I adjourn the meeting? So, uh, option number two is approved by a five to four margin. Option number two is to allow hydrofoils, efoils, but do not allow motorized surfboards. Motorized personal watercraft such as jet skis, wave runners, sea dews, and motorized surfboards are prohibited on all POA lakes. Motorized hydrofoils, efoils, and other, other similar types of personal watercraft are permitted on all POA lakes. POA lakes, provided that the operator does not exceed five miles per hour in the no wake zones, they wear a personal flotation device, they may not use the wake from another watercraft to jump, and they may not follow closer than 100 feet to an, of another watercraft. Okay, that's pretty much it. So, so if I understand correctly, we, we made a motion and that will proceed to the board of directors. And do they'll, they will take up the issue. Do we know when that meeting takes place? We'll likely talk about it tomorrow, but okay. uh, it's not officially on the agenda, so it'll be on the agenda for January. Okay. The, the first option failed. The first option was basically the status quo. There were four votes no, for. The very first. The very first vote. The very first vote was to allow motorized kayaks and paddleboards. What's the difference between a motorized kayak and paddleboard and a motorized surfboard? Or, or surfboard, surfboard? Surfboards go a lot faster. If you think about a kayak, somebody paddling a kayak or just having a little electric motor basically going to go five miles an hour or less or, or a power of kayak, you're not going to you're not going to go 30 <coughs> miles an hour in a kayak. It might be helpful to read seven and a half. Out loud. Where's 7F? On page 2. 
of the uh, proposed uh, modifications to the... Uh, Go ahead and read it. I don't have it in front of me. You turn your mic on. Turn your mic on, please. Sorry. You didn't want me to read it, Matt? What, what is it pertaining to? Uh, motorized personal water kayaks, canoes, stand-up paddle boards. Okay. Yeah, you can read it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, exception. Motorized personal watercraft such as kayaks, canoes, and stand-up paddle boards are allowed on all POA lakes, but they are restricted to travel no faster than five miles per hour. And that's the end of uh, subsection F. That's, yeah, that's what I said earlier. Okay. okay. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone, for being here.